Hi, this is Tara from the Fast Merge Studios. You have joined us in our interview series in conjunction with MWC Barcelona 2022. Today, we are speaking to Canalys, a leading global technology market analyst firm with a distinct channel focus. Canalys delivers smart market insights to IT channel and service provider professionals around the world. So now over to Ishan Rawal, the FastMod editor and correspondent, who will be speaking to Canalys chief analyst Matthew Ball on the company's MWC plans, as well as their experience as a leading research services provider for global IT. Hi, Matthew. Excited to have you on today's session. Thanks, Ishan. Glad to be here. Yeah, so let's get straight into it. So what are Canalys' plans for MWC? And how do the themes of MWC 2022 fit with your research focus? Yeah, so we're thrilled once again to, re to be returning to Barcelona for MWC, which is always a great event for networking with industry contacts, scheduled or in chance encounters in the hall and walkways, as well as learning from sessions and experiencing new products and, so and solutions up close. For sure, virtual events have improved, but nothing really beats attending in person. We're excited to be sending a team of analysts who can't wait to be back in person rather than a virtual event. And for some, it'll be the first since the start of the pandemic. In fact, our chief analyst and co-founder, Chris Jones, will be there. It really is an important event for us. In terms of the themes, there are a broad range, as well as sponsors and exhibitors. At Canalys, we have a, a, you know, analysts that cover all aspects of technology, from smartphones, PCs, and smart home tech, to cybersecurity, cloud, data centers, networking, and channel, just to name a few. So my focus is on cybersecurity and the cloud. So I'm excited to see many of the vendors that are attending fit into those categories. And I'm also excited to see a lot of the themes like advancing AI, cloud net, and internet of everything being so prominent. Really, cybersecurity and cloud services really underpin all those different areas. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Um, so talking of cybersecurity, what predictions do you forecast for the cybersecurity market in 2022? And what are some of the security challenges enterprises should be paying attention to? Yeah. So to start with, cybersecurity spending will continue to be one of the fastest growing sectors of the tech industry. In 2021, it grew 14 percent to $61 billion. And that's just the technology alone. When you add in services like consulting, managed services, penetration testing, then it's a $135 billion opportunity worldwide. In 2022, we forecast cybersecurity spending will grow more than 10%. This is a highly diverse industry that must be scalable. If you think about all the endpoints that need protecting, like PCs, smartphones, servers, virtual machines, and other devices like IoT, for example, medical and industrial machines, it's huge. The numbers of endpoints has expanded significantly over the last two years when you add in when you, when you add in all the new remote and hybrid workers and the new things that are all that are being connected. Networks also need protecting both enterprise and service providers. Email, our web activities, our access to information, our our identities, the data itself, and and the continuous assessment of, of software vulnerabilities are all important areas of investment. We expect organizations will continue to invest in all those areas as part of a multi-layered approach. But it's not just about protection. We also have to detect vulnerabilities, malicious activity, and attacks as quickly as possible to be able to respond effectively to minimize the damage of attacks. And in the event of a breach, we have to be able to restore data and operations without too much impact. Training and drive, driving awareness of users around the risks is also essential. This is all part of increasing our cyber resilience, and that has to be the primary focus of all organizations, because we've seen the economic and social impact of attacks, and it has to really be part of everything that we do. We see things like zero trust network access, extended detection and response, and securing the access to the services edge, or SASE, will remain key technology and solution areas. And those will be the main growth drivers of cybersecurity spending this year. Unfortunately, the threats are not going away anytime soon because last year data breaches increased 27% due to increase in ransomware attacks, with successful ransomware attacks increasing 50%. We 
We saw attacks across all sectors. Healthcare was the most targeted sector due to their critical services that they provide. The biggest attack was on the HSC in Ireland, which resulted in up to 80% of all outpatient hospital appointments having to be cancelled across the country. Universities and schools were heavily targeted as well, with faxes extorting you know, victims by disrupting online learning, access to content, as well as staff-student communications, as well as breaching sensitive student records. Organisations in financial services and government sectors also reported a sharp rise in data breaches, while ransomware attacks against retailers also remained high as the threat actors continued to target online, on online purchasing. Critical infrastructure like pipelines, water treatment plants were also heavily targeted, and these were high profile covered extensively in the media. The attack against the colonial pipeline in the US was perhaps the most the highest, highest profile as it, led to, as it led to a rise in oil prices and soon after that you know, President Biden issued his executive order to force the, you know, his government departments and operators of critical infrastructure to raise their cyber resilience. The reason for the rise in ransomware attacks is that data breaches have become more lucrative for the factors. Knowledge of GDPR fines, especially here in Europe, pay out some cyber insurance policies and the financial positions of targets are all used by the threat actors to set their ransomware demands. They then use double or triple extortion techniques by threatening to leak data while also targeting their suppliers and customers to get the victim to pay. We saw some uh, ransoms being as high as $70 million last year. In reality, the actual payments are a lot lower, but the cost of recovery can be up to 10 times the ransom itself. We expect this trend to continue in 2022. In fact, we're already seeing a number of high profile ransomware attacks this year, targeting uh, multiple oil transport and, and, and storage companies across Europe at a time when energy prices are already surging. And it's not going to stop. Organizations, organizations continue to do things that leave them exposed. It's things like enabling the productivity of work or of remote workers without thinking of securing them, deploying IoT without monitoring network traffic, and migrating workloads to the cloud without checking configurations. These have created vulnerabilities and increased the attack surface for the factors to exploit. Right. Um, so just over there, you mentioned about migration to the cloud and how that opens up vulnerabilities. But let's pivot just to talking about the cloud. Now, part of your focus under the Candleless Enterprise Tech is cloud and infrastructure. Now, talking about cloud, what is expected, firstly, in terms of growth and expenditure? And secondly, in terms of the new use cases that will be pushing its adoption to the next level? And in that, in terms of players in the cloud space, can we expect major shifts in the existing ecosystem? Will there be newcomers? And who stands to gain the most from the trends that we see today? Yeah, good question. So, Canalis has just published the latest estimates for Q4 2021, which was again another record for cloud infrastructure services spending. And that exceeded around about $50 billion for the first time. Total spending uh, grew 34% to $54 billion, and that's up $14 billion on the same period a year ago. We're seeing industry-specific applications continuing to diversify the use of cloud infrastructure services especially in healthcare and the public sector. This combined with workload migration and cloud native development as part of digital transformation projects is continuing to increase demand for these services. In addition, we're also seeing the lasting pandemic related uh, consumption drivers such as remote working and learning, e-commerce, gaming and content as well as streaming, remain, you know, all, all remaining important consumption drivers. Going forwards, we will see new immersive use cases emerge, such as the metaverse, which will drive future demand and the need for even more powerful, distributed, intelligent and scalable services with much lower latency than we see today. For full year 2021, cloud infrastructure services spending grew 35% to $192 billion, up from $142 billion in 2020. And we forecast 2022 to grow at least 25% to approximately $250 billion. So that's a phenomenal size, and it's now a major part of all technology spending. 
The top three cloud service providers, so AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud, they account for a combined 64% share of this spend. And when you add in things like uh, other companies like Huawei Cloud, Baidu AI Cloud, Alibaba, as well as Tencent Cloud, who dominate in China, which is also the second largest market, as well as you also add in Oracle and IBM Cloud, that's over 75% of the total cloud market. Beyond that, the market fragments really quickly. So it's really hard to see how any new cloud service providers will really emerge because the amount of capex that's needed to just build out the required infrastructure is enormous. And it's not just infrastructure that's needed, it's also people. So cloud architects, architects the vertical specialists, they're all needed to sell cloud infrastructure services to organizations. It's a big recruitment um, headache. However, we also see we do see software and new vendors, uh, new kind of AI focused vendors emerge in the broader ecosystem, as well as specialists in, in the metaverse that are, gonna, that are gonna build out their services on top of AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. And we're already seeing um, a lot of venture capital funding going into those, into those types of companies. So we do expect to see some of those type of companies emerge over the coming years. Awesome, yeah, that, there is a lot going on over there and I'm sure we could talk a lot more about it, but um, I want to talk about Canalys itself and how you know your approach to research. Uh, can you share with us the benefits of your channel-focused approach and how can vendors leverage this to fulfill their knowledge needs? Yeah, so we work with all the leading technology vendors uh, globally and each client will know us for specific research areas, whether that's PC, smartphones, cybersecurity or cloud. But what really underpins all of our research is the channel. That's really about how technology companies take their products and services to market and the route they choose to sell to their customers. It could be retailers, it could be managed service providers, system integrators or, or via distribution. And every vendor has a slightly different channel strategy. We are, we are uniquely positioned to help vendors to better understand their channel how to increase their performance, how to expand their coverage. We do this with quarterly market data and insights, bespoke consulting work. We also, we also host the industry's largest independent channel networking event called the Canalis Channels Forum. So there's a whole range of areas where we engage with clients. It's also worth noting that we have analysts all around the world, in Singapore, India, China, uh, Europe and Latin America and the US. So we also have an extensive geographic coverage. Great. So thank you, Matthew, for joining us in today's session and sharing your insights of the latest findings in cybersecurity and the enterprise tech market. Yeah, thanks, Ishan. So we look forward to, uh, to reconnecting with people again in, in person during the, uh, during the upcoming MWC event in Barcelona. Great. And over to Tara at the Fast Mode Studios. Thanks, Ishan. So for everyone tuning in, you can learn more about Canalys at canalys.com stroke analysis stroke cybersecurity. Don't forget to visit thefastmode.com at www.thefastmode.com for more updates and coverage on MWC 2022. Thank you and see you again. Bye.